like I said, you know, this is largely men, you know, um, largely, largely male. And, you know, Mark Katz has written about this. Other people have written about it. Um, I feel like this is a changing thing. Um, and I'll, I'll kind of break down what, what I think, you know, and, and it gets down to largely, you know, gender roles and, you know, the social construction of, of gender roles over time. And, you know, obviously, if we're going by stereotypical, you know, male, female gender roles, specifically in the United States, but you can extrapolate that to a lot of other, other places that are, you know, patriarchal. Um, you know, bo young boys are told to play with um, toys, tools, take things apart, build things, make things, whatever. And girls are, you know, uh, told to play with dolls, pretend cook, you know, all these sort of, you know, domestic training, you know, social constructs and not, you know, told to play with cameras, not told to scratch records, you know, not told, but not shown like this is something y'all can do. And I think part of the, the major issue also, just other than, um, you know, what society says, what parents say, what you learn in school, um, all that stuff, you know, uh, is the representation, right? Like for a long time, you, you know, um, young ladies couldn't look at DJ battles and see themselves, you know, there. And, th and that has been changing. So there have, you know, been um, Pam the Funkstress who, who will talk about Cotton Candy, who were, you know, women that were doing their thing in the, in the 90s. But you, you've had uh, quite a few, um, you know, DJs since then, female DJs that have kind of come up and come out, um, you know, in the in the battles, um, you know, but I think it's largely like, yeah, social construct thing, you know, that goes from like a young age. And I do think that that is changing as like people have kind of some people have kind of moved away from those stereotypical uh gender performance things that they teach their children you know younger girls are like oh yeah like learning how to you know use chainsaws at a young age or learning how to make shit or you know build stuff um learning how to film and use cameras and you know uh learning how to scratch records learn how to make beats and i think this is a relatively new thing you know i think this is a relatively newer thing in the last 10 or 15 years where you, you're starting to see all these young uh, female DJs that kind of have, have, you know, been beat makers. It's still a very small amount compared to young boys, but there, there is more representation there. But um, it's largely a male, a male dominated, uh, you know, male culture. So, um, and I think that's, yeah, that kind of is just so important, you know, like, um, you know, Mark Katz kind of writes about this in his chapter. He, you know, he says it's, it's you know, it's a, it, you know, it goes back to social construction, um, but technical knowledge, you know, just knowing how to use the equipment, which again goes back to the whole element of gender of gender roles and equipment, you know, um, and like what are young kids told to play with, and how are they told to play with things, and what are they taught, and who's teaching them that, you know, from from a, from a young age, you know, and I think that's super changing. I mean. Um, you see this clip here of DJs Amira and Kayla, who are, you know, young 14-year-old girls who are incredible, incredible scratch DJs and performers, party rockers, and, you know, uh, I was talking to their dad, and, you know, he's a former hip-hop producer, like, not even necessarily beat maker, but, like, a producer-producer, and, you know, he, he just kind of gave them the opportunity, he gave them... You know, he kind of knew a little bit about DJ and he gave them the means, you know, um, like access to the gear. And then Kurt said, yeah, if you want to do this, do this. And they fell in love with it, you know. And that wasn't something that was happening in the 80s and in, in, in the 90s, you know, in so many ways. So, um, and, you know, the other thing uh, gets back to the uh, technical knowledge, you know, the practice part um, and the, the cultural knowledge of the records. And then this is highly a learned thing in the, um, you know, um, based on representation, but also really based on like reification in, in, in culture, you know, and it's, you can't really say that hip hop has discriminated, but it has in some ways and it's been discouraging. And again, again, I think really a lot of it gets back to who, who do you see? You know, who do you see winning battles? Who do you see in the battles? You know, um, and I think as more DJs like DJ Pearly, who's who's recently, you know, won DMC, uh, you know, nationals here in the United States, you know, 
um, who's a you know young young Puerto Rican DJ from New York City. You know um, DJ Coco Chanel, who's baller. You know from New York. Um, you know DJ Shorty, who's a super dope um, scratch DJ. Yeah, buddy. Mama's gone. That's my son yelling at me. Yep. <laughs> All sorts of distractions. Uh, remote learning, kitty. Um, anyways, um, yeah. So uh, you know, again, I think that that's just something to sort of think about, and and I think the same goes for beat making. But I do think, you know, from what I've no from what I've known this, and and just seeing like young kids come up is like, you know parents are giving them access they're giving them encouragement to go down these roads like you know before I had my son I knew I was having a son I was hoping for a daughter because I was just thinking like I can show her how to how to use a chop saw and how to build a house and um how to scratch him and, and make beats and if that's something she wants to do I'd be so stoked um because like not not a lot of those opportunities are necessarily given you know, and then I found out I have a son and I just gotta show him how to do and do that shit which is cool um but but i think there's just more and more parents and a lot more actually i'm gonna you know say a lot more dads who you know hip-hop dj hip-hop head dads who you know have girls and they're like hey ladies check this out like you can do this you know so i do i do think it's really changing it has a lot to do with parents and what you know, what they're being taught and what, what kind of access they're given to, but um, their kids. And I think a lot of it then goes back to representation. Who's Who do you see, you know, uh, in the videos? Who do you see, you know, rocking the gear? Um, so we watched this clip, uh, you know, a little bit of cutting Candy. She's cutting it up in the 98 DMCs. This is just really important. Um, Candy uh, was a DJ um, in Fifth Platoon, which is a, a, a crew uh, out of New York City, a Filipino American DJ crew with like uh, DJ Neil Armstrong, um, DJ Vin Rock, um, DJ Daddy Dog, you know, um, just the real, you know, and they kind of came up under the, the executioners, X Men. And uh, until 2016, um, when Pearly, you know, uh, you know, won the New York DMCs, which was unheard of um, at the time. Um, you know, and, and and was runner up at the at the the nationals. Um, you know, uh, Cotton Candy was the only female to ever make it to the to you know to the finals until 2016. So there hasn't been um, a, a lot of ladies that have been represented at the higher ranks of the DMCs. So Cotton Candy is super dope and uh, just an excellent person. Um, a really strong uh, activist and advocate, um, you know, now for uh, people of color and, and women, um, not just in hip hop, but in general. So salute Cutting Candy, I see you. Um, also, you know, another real important um, DJ, uh, you know, early, you know, hip hop DJ doing battles with Pam the Funkstress, uh, rest in peace. Uh, she's from the Bay Area. She was the DJ for the group called The Coup, and she was also um, the DJ for Prince, um, you know, before he passed away, and she recently passed away. Um, she used to do this thing, again, you know, when you kind of talk about, um, you know, in the last module, I talked a little bit about, you know, fem you know female MCs, femcs, why they're, you know, a, you know, a little bit different in that they ha they they can approach a, a topic from a different way. Well, Pam used to do. I think Pam is a large lady, as you can see, um, where she'd use her breasts to move the crossfader between the records. So she would juggle, but she would she would use her breasts, and this is something she was pretty pretty well known for. Is one of the things that that she would do, right? So it's kind of a, again a way of uh, as a lady kind of taking advantage of. Of, of you know your position and, and the parts that you have um, to be more creative, you know. Um, but they were just some of the early, really important, uh, you know, female DJs um, to kind of make make a make some headway in the battles. Um, but still, there's a lot of work, lot of work to be done here.